and welcome. I am Michelle Harrell, the board chair of Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia, also known as RPSV. And I would like to thank all the attendees, presenters, and presenters for being a part of this special evening to support the homeless adults we serve. RPSV would also like to thank Busboys and Poets for partnering with us for this special event. And our wonderful event MC, Drew Wilder, reporter for NBC4 in Washington, DC. Additionally, RPSV would like to thank our amazing volunteers, Zavin Smith, Director of Development and Alumni Relations for George Mason University, and Olivia McKay from the Arlington Chamber of Commerce for sharing their technical expertise to ensure that the event goes off seamlessly on Zoom. And of course, we cannot move forward without a heartfelt thank you to our incredible event coordinator, Monica Taylor. Without her dedication, this magical night would not have been possible. Finally, we want to acknowledge the Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia founders, Jerome Hughes, Executive Director, and Lisa Goodwin, Administrative Director, for it was their hard work and talent that helped RPSV materialize. We are hosting this event in honor of Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia's 10th anniversary of service to those with mental health, substance use, and homelessness issues in Northern Virginia. At Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia, our mission is to create a safe space actually for those struggling with mental illness, substance use, or homelessness. We do not stop there. We hire those in recovery to help their peers overcome the very same challenges they endured. Our staff offers a helping hand and a listening ear of someone who has experienced the same difficulties and has persevered to the point where they can reach out their hand to help another person in need, to help a fellow survivor back up onto his or her feet and onto solid ground. Everyone in our organization has a redemption story. We are who we serve. We run five recovery centers in Northern Virginia that provide food and shelter, inspiring groups, computer access, computer training, and resources for finding a home and employment. We also offer 15 open discussion and structured virtual support groups that all focus on wellness. We help people all over Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland, and beyond as people start to learn about our programs online. All of our programs are free and we've helped over 100,000 people since we were founded in 2011. This would all not be possible without our staff and volunteers who put in countless hours of administration and peer support. We also offer warm line support a warm line is a hotline, but it is designed to help before the crisis ensues. It is staffed by kind, empathetic, and trained peer specialists who care and will listen. We also offer warm line one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions. You can learn about all of our programs on our website, www.rpsva.org. All of our programs are free to the public. Recovery Program Solutions has one main goal. We turn pain into power as we are those we serve. And on that note, I introduce with a very warm welcome, Charity Blackwell, Director of Poetry Events for Busboys and Poets. Thank you again for being our partner in this exciting event where we will share our wonderful words to help the homeless of Northern Virginia and to let COVID know that we will have the last word. We are all so lucky to have a variety of writers with a myriad of experience and backgrounds joining us from all over the United States. Charity, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you, RPSV, for partnering with Bus Boys for this extremely, extremely meaningful event. Like was said prior my name is Charity Blackwell and I am the director of poetry events at Busboys and Poets um, and I'm really really looking forward 
to hearing all of the poets as not in my as I'm not only just the director of poetry events at Busboys and Post, but I'm also a professional spoken word artist. So I speak from experience and I really am looking forward to hearing all of your voices today. Um, as we all saw at the inauguration, most of us I assume probably watched it or watched some of it. Poetry stole the show. Amanda Gorman got up there and brought healing it, during a time where things are a little bit uneasy, where people are feeling a little bit unsure. And there were amazing performances that night. You had Lady Gaga, you had a whole run of amazing folks that got up on the stage, but poetry was what really hit home for folks, what people really needed to hear and needed to feel. And we at Bus Boys, that is what we're all about. We create intentional safe spaces for art, specifically poetry, and for culture to collide because we understand the power of poetry and its impact on the artists and the people who experience it. So during the pandemic, we have pivoted to continue to provide virtual poetry events and spaces just like the one that's provided here tonight. Um, RPSV, your mission and your work align absolutely 100% with busboys and poets. Y'all are trying to create safe spaces for people to heal, to, for people to heal, to feel heard, and to feel supported. And I hope that folks that are here tonight are listening with open mind and open heart to all the artists tonight and to the artists. Best of luck with your performances, and I'm looking forward to listening and holding space for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again to Charity and Bus Boys and Poets for this exciting new partnership. Now I would like to present Drew Wilder, our MC, who is a reporter for NBC4, who covers Northern Virginia. Drew grew up south of Chicago and has lived in Virginia for the past five years, currently in Falls Church with his fiance Beth and their great Dane named Lincoln. As a journalist, Drew has interviewed former President Barack Obama, covered major sporting events from NFC Championship Games to NCAA March Madness, and has reported on national stories from New York City to Richmond. Much like all of our lives, the news has been completely shaped by the pandemic for the past year. Drew says he's grateful for the opportunity to share those important community <laughs> stories and is honored to be a part of the event tonight. We are grateful for his participation. Drew will now MC the event, so welcome and enjoy. Michelle, thank you so much. And thank you to Bus Boys and Poets. Thank you to Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia for having me tonight. And more importantly, for the work that, that both of, of your organizations and both of your groups do for our community. Uh, it matters a lot, it matters to real people. and. I think that's kind of where, where I would like to start this event tonight. You know, we heard a, a little bit about what RPSV does. I wanted to share though, a couple of stories of, of real humans that were served by RPSV to, to kind of put a little bit of emotion, a little bit of uh, feeling to, to what we're here tonight. Um, so this is a story, uh, the, a short story that was um, written by one of the people that, that was served uh, recently. They write that at the wellness center I attend, people patiently take the time to help you. I come from a background where I experienced many struggles within myself, battling homelessness, substance abuse, and a lifestyle that was not helpful. But by coming to this wellness center, I learned to listen. They also have touched my heart with compassion. And one day I came to the center and attended one of the meetings and truly opened myself up I ended up crying because of how much peace and love I felt from the other participants and staff. I will continue to attend these meetings and strive for a better life for myself with the support of the staff. I recommend everyone come and see the wellness centers for yourself. Another person who recently used one of the centers uh, had recently lost their IT computer specialist job. They needed to use the center's computers so they could start to look for new work, but sometimes the computers were unavailable due to center conducting work groups and, and other things of the like. So one of the staff actually asked one of their family members who worked in the same field for help, and they provided this person with their personal refurbished computer, and now they have two interviews coming up in the next week. So those two stories I thought really highlighted the incredible incredibly important work that RPSV does for our friends, for our family, and, and people who 
are our neighbors that live and work and eat and survive here in our community. And, and that's all the more reason why it's so important for us to get together tonight. We're, we're gonna get to our presenters and, and we're all excited for the entertainment portion uh, of tonight. But of course, this is also a fundraiser. Uh, so we would love to generate a little bit of revenue here and make sure that our PSV can continue doing the important work that they do. So you'll see in the chat, there are some links there. I'll also shout them out real quick. You can go to our PSV's website and you can donate there. And then it was just put in the chat. There's also a Venmo RPSV underscore cares. Um, and your donations will support homeless survival kits, which is an ongoing effort right now. So any amount of money that you're able to give tonight, or even if you can just blast it out on social media and we, we can generate some conversation and, and keep that going, that will be really helpful and continue this mission on for another 10 years. So with that, we want to get to our presenters tonight. Uh, we've got a variety of poets, authors, presenters, artists that are sharing with us tonight. And these presenters, they range in experience, novice, very experienced. We're honored that they're sharing their gift with us tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. And obviously, since we're all not sitting together in the same room, we can't, you know, share snaps and, and encouragement and, uh, and participate in that way. But feel free to engage in the chat. Um, you know, good line, or, or let let these presenters know uh, that, that you enjoyed with um, that, that you're enjoying this along with them. So we're we're really thankful for that. Um, so we'll get started with our first presenter as we introduce everybody. Um, I you know, hop on, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, the title of your work, um, and then if you want to give us a brief description about the concept or the motivation for your work, please feel free to do that and then uh, and then go on and present. So our first presenter tonight, warm welcome to Anissa Mustafa. Hi, thank you so much for introducing me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Anissa Mustafa. I am from Springfield, Virginia. Mm, I uh, work with RPSV as the warm line coordinator. And um, I wanted to personify COVID. And when I came to try and personify COVID, I couldn't think of any better words that were used than the words of Dr. Seuss when he wrote, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. So I am going to do, you are a mean one, dear COVID. You're a mean one, dear COVID. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel. Dear COVID, you're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. You're a monster, dear COVID. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You have garlic in your soul. Dear COVID, I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. You're a foul one, dear COVID. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile. Dear COVID, given a choice between the two of you, I take the seasick crocodile. You're a vile one, dear COVID. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is full of gunk. Dear COVID, the three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk. You're a rotter, dear COVID. You're the king of sinful thoughts. Your heart's a dead tomato splotched with moldy purple spots. Dear COVID, your soul is an appalling dump heap overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable, mangled up in tangled up knots. You nauseate me, dear COVID, with a nauseous super nos. You're a crooked, dirty jockey. You drive a crooked hoss. Dear COVID, you're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. Awesome. Anissa, thank you so much. I love the personification in that. It was a clever, uh, clever way to take that. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Uh, we're going to move on now to the poetry slam portion of tonight's event. So we've got uh, three artists who are going to share with us and they're going to go through and they're also going to come back uh, in the next hour and they're going to present uh, for a second round. 
um, we are going to have a poll uh, so you can share which you like the most and we're going to tally those up and and uh, the winner of tonight will uh, of course win the bragging rights of, of the Deer COVID event. So uh, first we want to give a warm welcome to our first uh, the SLAM presenter. This is Dominique Bethel. Okay, this is called Still Positive. I waited 14 days for the bear of bad news to spill blues on my spirit. Spread sorrow to my heart, guess I have to start over. Body quotes mental hieroglyphics and I can sense the signs again. The crowding of squatters in my thorax, the, the squad posting up like straight facts, like we got you for letting your guard down, for thinking things were gonna be fine, like get back to normal. Girl, who you trying? We gonna mess your year up. Not scared yet, we gonna bring the fear up. Have your eyes sweating like free showers, we are not done with you yet. Like, bet. And I can't run. Can't discreetly secrete these mucinex colleagues into a cup or a can or a sink without everybody knowing, without people showing up with cross fingers and medicated Bibles like, get back, I'll pray for you. Flip switches like AK singing cup song, like be gone, I love you, but not that much. They have mental touch down to a science, like take your phone out and I'll hug you virtually. This is lonely. This is the closest I've tried to suicidal thoughts in a while. The farthest I've been from my inner child, these months feel like currency. Isolation for a good nap, or I'll trade you company for educational progress because straight A's, right? I didn't mean to catch it. Didn't mean to endanger Common. I know she's always making sense and now why seems like to be so incomprehensible. Like, did I think? I was invincible, like invisible, call me Mr. Cellophane, but the germs can still see me. The virus is still attacking, attaching to every crevice as I breathe. The croak is coming and now that I'm no longer running, I hope I can keep up. Can resist the touch of humanity a little longer, take the vitamins, eat the soup, drink the tea and grow stronger, stay positive. I no longer have a choice. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely beautiful and powerful. We wanna keep this rolling, uh, keep this energy up. Uh, please give a welcome to Matthew Maroki. Matthew. You know, let's just introduce myself with poetry, right? That's how we're gonna do this one. Okay. America, America. God shed his grace on thee. Fingers linked between mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters, familias, trying to survive against the war on life. How's your day going? The white woman asks me every day when I walk into the coffee shop, and I always tell her I'm surviving, but am I truly surviving? Am I? <laughs> I'm not trying to survive like how my people are trying to survive. That I'm not crossing the Rio Grande or transforming myself into a worm so I can slide through tunnels, giving the earth holes so that it may breathe. For immigrants are the ones who make the earth breathe. Rising after laying on sidewalks, tired as if it just rained on a cool spring day, hand in hand with your children, parents, grandparents, others who you do not know, but who simply wish to survive just like you. Ran, drove, blew, swam, dug, crawled, and made damn sure to stay alive just to get a taste of the other side. You're found. So they force you to trade your linked fingers for linked chains, your mother's warmth for foil blankets, your father's strength to take care of another child who is not yours but came to this country just like you. Your brother or sister taken into a different cage, camp and city. Mamá, papá, se dijo, solo vamos a vivir esto si hacemos eso juntos. We will only survive this if we do this together. You're alone now. Crying child in arms, wanting milk from your prepubescent breast. Guards walking by, talking the language of free speak. Chain link vision. Cracked mud hugging your thighs, face dry and skinny foil wrapped around the child for they only gave you one. This is America. This is why you swam, why you ran, why you dug, why you left home, why you try not to die. This is America, the land of the free and opportunity and endless wealth and apparent greater community. This is America, the place where surviving was supposed to meant thriving. 
where your Theo sent money from green that turned into the howl of a coyote that led you to the serpent's tunnel. This is America, the place where the cartel won't sell you as a prostitute, where La Mata's power wanes, where the drug kings fell to rain, the place that you do not know, the place that is not your home and it place that is not your home and they make damn sure you know that too. The place that mama y papa said was supposed to be safe. This is America. From sea to shining sea. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Beautiful. Uh, moving on to our next presenter. This is Kieran Forrest. Kieran. Uh, thanks for having me. So yeah, my name is Kieran Forrest. If you like this work today, then um, I'll put, um, you can follow me on Instagram and I'll be putting more poetry up there. So yeah, I'm from England uh, near Manchester and this poem isn't really about COVID, but it's kind of about just some of the things that you were talking about with the charity and what's involved with your charity. And it's called Oliver McGowan. A trail of green smoke zigzags through the clouds from God's breath. It looks like a life support machine. Not just any, but Oliver McGowan's, an autistic man given medication by force. I wouldn't say I'm religious, with these angels dressed as nurses, uniforms sewn from an iceberg. He refused the tablets, a handful of maggots leaping up to his lips. They make my eyes go up, he said. If Oliver's voice is carried by the worms in the grass, the birds stretch his rage into a pink mountain. The hospital painted red by the moon. Will you please Listen to us. Thanks, that's me. <laughs> Kieran, thank you so much for sharing beautiful stuff. So we're going to open up a poll. And we want you guys to uh, to share your thoughts, who you enjoyed. And, and remember, they're going to come back and they're going to present uh, another piece coming up here in a little bit. So you probably saw that uh, poll just popped up. Go ahead and um, select what you like. I'm going to go through and do this real quick, but I'd like to get the... Uh, next person going here so we can keep this flowing. So we're gonna do a little open mic time. We're gonna get some other people in here. Um, and then we've got some more things to get to before we bring uh, bring the slam back. So now we wanna introduce Libby Gephardt. Libby. Hi, uh, my name's Libby. I go to Purdue in West Lafayette, Indiana. I'm a freshman. Um, so I've been working on this series for about three months. Each of these I've written in the moment of when I was feeling these various emotions. Um, they go on a sort of timeline of emotions of when you are falling in love with someone and then you're forced to fall out mm -hmm. going through times of euphoria and times of loss so yeah um it's pretty much thoughts turned into art and it's just been a huge creative outlet for me for the past three to four months sort of writing letters that i'm never gonna send and i wanted to share them here so that um someone could hear them other than my roommate <laughs> and so maybe i could impact um people with my feelings as well. So it is called, there are six short poems and it is called Letters That I Will Never Put a Stamp On. So let's start. Writer's Block. For months it was frozen. I didn't care to have art in sight, but then I met you and suddenly my mind burst into technicolor, banishing the black and the white. The Five Senses. No amount of days will ever allow me to come close to obtaining enough of the whisper of fingertips like silk against your skin, the numbness of my ears because of the trance you put them in, the aroma that even the most enchanted garden in the world cannot reproduce, and the awe in my eyes when they lay themselves on you. One more thing I've yet to meet, a mystery that with the others can never compete. Far from home. Finally, at night is when I get my relief to just shut my eyes and get some sleep. But there you are in my dreams, closer there than here you will ever be. Now my senses are overwhelmed with loss. To just touch you and taste you once more, no amount of money would be too high of a cost. And in the morning, it hurts just the same when I wake up to check my phone and don't see the home that is in your name. What once was mine? I don't want to see some cold-hearted blonde bitch laying in my bed. 
She doesn't care about you the way that I do. And I promise she won't fill the void that I left. I don't want her laying where I once was there in your arms where I should be. I know it's selfish, but I'd rather you be alone than with, than with her. I'd rather my bed be empty, 20 somethings. I can't picture a year from now. You'll be heading out to leave and I'll be where you are. Will you remember me when we're on different coastlines 2000 miles apart? Will you think of the words that you spoke to me on that cold December night there in the dark? Because only then are we the closest we'll ever be. From now on, the thing I want to be the closest to will always be too far. Stranger, I will never forget how you made me feel the roar in my chest when I was no longer enough from you. The feeling of betrayal when I gave you every part of me and you tore each of them in two. I'd rather be forgotten than pushed away for being too good for you. You were my whole heart and now you've turned into something I only once knew. Thank you. Thank you so much, Libby. Glad that you had the courage to share that with us. That was absolutely beautiful. Bring those letters out. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, we've got one more open mic presenter uh, to get to right now before we share a little video. So please welcome Lydia Reed. Lydia. Hello. Okay. The Year the Music Died by Lydia and Arnie Reed. The bitter winds of January stung Joe's face. His few belongings gathered close under the bridge for safekeeping. His guitar sits unplayed. No music in Music City. No minimum wage gigs to pay the rent. Only his faithful dog to keep him company. These days keep turning 400,000 souls gone in the flash. Millions of jobs vanished overnight. COVID sparks homelessness, feeding addictions, threatening life itself. That without music feels only the gray winds of winter that sting Joe's face under the bridge. Someone asks if he can play them a song. Melody rises again from the old wooden box and they sing along. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My name is Lydia Reed. I live in Nashville with my husband, Arnie Reed, and he assisted me in writing this. I too am in recovery. I have been in recovery April the 1st is my recovery date. And as of April the 1st, 2021, I will have been in recovery for 30 years. So I'm telling you, it can be done. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing that. Hello, Arnie. Hey. Thank you for being a part of this event uh, and thank you for sharing those thoughts. Um, Lydia, we wish you the best and, and strength to, to, to continue on. We appreciate you sharing your, your honest and, and real experience with us. That, that's exactly the mission and, and what we're here to, to, uh, to bring light to tonight and, and uh, celebrate the work that's being done uh, here in, in our area. So thank you for joining us all the way from Nashville. And, and that actually segues us pretty, pretty smoothly into uh, into a short video that we're going to watch. Um, this is going to introduce the, the homeless survival kits um, that we're trying to raise money for. So again, there's a, in the chat, there's a couple of links. Um, if you'd like to make a small donation, we're going to show you right now exactly what that, that donation is going to support.
So again, um, there's links in the chat. If you can provide any donation tonight, that's the important tools and the important work that, that that's going to support. Of course, um, you know, we know where COVID's left so many families and so many people right now. Those of us here in Northern Virginia know that, well, I guess actually a lot of us around the country are getting ready for a, a really nasty snowstorm over the next few days, which really highlights the important work that these homeless kits provide and, um, and also that RPSV does day in and day out. And now we're lucky to have RPSV board member with us. This is Leslie Wirtz. She's gonna pick up the open mic section of our event tonight. So Leslie. Well, hello everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here this evening. Not only do I sit on the board with Recovery Program Solutions, but I also volunteer um, so that I can be certified as a peer recovery specialist. I have over 22 years successful recovery from drugs and alcohol. And I am originally from Philadelphia and I currently reside in Herndon, Virginia. Saturdays are the days where I am able to visit one of the recovery centers. And so I got a chance to see firsthand today the difference that Recovery Program Solutions makes being able to sit around adults who are looking to overcome some of the challenges with um, alcohol, drugs, and mental illness. And so um, it's a pleasure to be able to support um, and to participate tonight. And so thank you for everyone who is uh, here tonight and um, the participants and those who are here to support. And so I also have a, a poem that I put together and it's called Dear COVID. Well, 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 COVID, we want our wellness back. Each dimension of our well being has been under your attack. Emotionally, we are drained, not knowing what to expect. A new strain COVID, really? What will you think of next? Physically, we are burdened and not necessarily from a positive test, but it's your silent invisible lurking which causes us undue stress. Financially, we've certainly felt the pressure as you wreak havoc on the economy affecting us all. And we are sidelined in hopeful anticipation that it's you that crashes and tumbles and falls. Occupationally, yeah, you showed up there too with small business closings, job loss and such affecting each person, the family and society as a whole. I'm telling you, it's been just too much. Environmentally, we admit to improve conditions, reduce pollution, better air quality and noises down, but the cons far outweigh the pros because the overall damage you've caused is much more profound. Intellectually, you leave us dumbfounded. Who can understand or reason with your train of thought? And the world's most distinguished scholars like the rest of us are puzzled and distraught. And socially, oh my goodness, you made it risky to love on our family and friends, but it's relationship that we need now more than ever. Is love, kindness, and connection something you comprehend? Spiritually, now that's where true power is found. The light within we fight hard to maintain. We keep praying and believing for a better tomorrow, healing freedom and wellness again. You've made our work that much more important as our vulnerable neighbors are further distressed, but we will stand in the gap, dear COVID. Overcoming challenges is what we do best. Thank you. Beautiful, Leslie. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. And thank you for the very important work um, that, that you do in our community with our PSB. Our next presenter tonight, give a warm welcome to Lan May. Lan. My name is Lan, hi. Uh, and I am pulling up my poem, which is also called Dear COVID. And I'm from Chicago, Illinois, uh, originally born in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the motivation behind my poem is uh, the fact that I found this event and made me want to create. And, uh, and I'm a creator generally. I do, I'm an artist who does mixed media art, painting, traditional art, and poetry. I'll leave my, uh, you can read along with me 
um, at the link that I just put in the chat and the first link that says read along with me. All right, I'll give a few seconds so people could click on the link if you would like to, maybe like. Okay. Dear COVID, your presence makes me feel so alone. I'm too deep inside of my head and I don't wanna be home. I wanna interact with people. People outside of these household members, dear COVID, I remember what it was like to be with someone, someone outside last, last December. It was cold, but at least we could find warmth, warmth near all the people we love, sitting near each other, being close during holidays. The important thing is making memories and people being present with each other. The people we love are the best present. Dear COVID, I wanna breathe outside without the fear of me being sent sent to wherever it is after death, dear COVID. I don't want my family tomorrow with our names in a grave. I wanna socialize so badly, but I know I should behave. I'm a people dependent person who can't just live, live off a pen and dance alone in a room all day. Dear everyone else, we are social animals. And without the social part, it makes some of us not want to exist. It's Sad, but it's the truth, but we must presently persist because suicide figures are going up. What I'm asking you is please, please try your best to stay alive with us. Don't try to fly to the heavens yet. Keep walking upon Mother Earth because your existence is worth, worth more than any diamond I could buy. All I am asking for you is to try, try your best to survive. I'm not Telling us just to you, this is for me, myself, and I too. We need to keep doing the things that makes us happy, fun, outlets like I did, maybe through art or poetry. Live your life and be present with us because you matter to somebody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I want to introduce our, uh, our next presenter tonight. This is Walena Booker. Walena. Um, I am Melina Booker. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I am a mother, a wife, uh, an educator. And since COVID, I am a blogger. Um, I've been writing poetry since I was 11. Uh, the first poem I'm going to share with you is called Driver's Seat. Uh, this poem really is to remind us uh, that we have, we have the power to um, to be in the driver's seat of our lives. And even though it feels like COVID is in the driver's seat at times, um, we really do have that internal power. Uh, the poem was written um, in the fall as schools were uh, open and some students returned back to the classroom uh, hybrid and many teachers like myself were asked to remain uh, virtual. Um, and so my class is 100% virtual. Um, I had to go into the building to teach to an empty room and uh, doing that for months and uh, I could hear students in the building. I could hear their laughter and their giggles and their footsteps. Uh, and then I had to go into my empty room, shut the door and teach. So with that, I give you driver's seat. Empty seats in front of me where students once marked the spot. Loving hearts rush in where fools dare not. Empty classrooms starve souls like empty puffs. Shocked from the shot that students are home in not the room deathly quiet. My will is all I've got. It's like teaching to air but I can never stop my heart submerged in emptiness. Pressure rises to the top, alone in a solitary room like a horror movie plot. Little voices wish for school to open, sadly to no avail. COVID is in the driver's seat, so I begin to wail like seeing the colors of the rainbow, but only in grayscale, it feels like hugging the wind as you inhale 
like holding the bluest water in my arms like a pail. Like sitting alone in the warden's jail. Yearning of sailing the high seas with abandoned sails hopes and dreams in hearts still prevail. I've got minds to mold and I cannot fail. Ails me to teach this way through sorrow and travail. No teachers stop by just to check in. Tiny boxes with a side of chat. That is how my day begins. I follow the schedule, check off the safety list, Blink to hold back tears forming in my eyes amidst teaching to screens with confused cares. I exhale a sigh and pray upward to heaven's skies, wishing these screens would somehow come alive and my classroom once again filled with bright inquisitive eyes. Thank you. And my next poem that I'm going to share with you um, uh, is from a different lens. It's not my teaching lens. It's from uh, my heart and my personal struggle um, in supporting my family member as um, he struggled with addiction. Um, this poem is called Been Searching. And for those of us affected by the disease of addiction, we know that it is a family disease and that everyone in that family is affected. And so I became consumed with my loved one's behaviors and choices. And um, when I thought they might be using, I would search for that evidence. I could not search, I was compelled to search. And so, Poetry is what I turn to to get through those tough days. Um, learning to detach with love is something that I work on every day, reminding myself that my loved one deserves the dignity and respect to make the choices that they are able to make for themselves. And with that, I give you Been Searching. Rummage through your storage bin, ransack your drawer some more, looked in the bottom drawer times four, closest to your side of the bed like I did before. Each day I checked the one place you said you hoped I would never look instead, the oven boiler. Instead I check it before I go to bed, Hunted all the usual places I found your stash before. Checked in the hidden corner, under the kitchen sink, behind the cabinet door. I looked in the obstructed corner, on the top of the fridge, under your side of the bed, feeling along the bed's ridge. I looked. I looked in the hidden places, swirling in my head. I guess it's true. Lightning never strikes in the same place. Twice, I dread. Look deep down between the couch pillows low, slide my hand around each pillow. I looked alongside the cushions, slow, frantic. I'll find it, yet scared I won't ever know. Searched yesterday and the day before, searching again, and yet I searched some more. Search the other night, and even though I swore not to look again, desperately scavenged through your bin more thoroughly this time. I scrutinized the receipt line, inspected the store name, the date, the time, combed through your drunk drawer, went through the bottom drawer instead, searching hopelessly the drawer closest to your side of the bed. Turn the place upside down, no stone left unfound. Searching like a mad woman chased by hellhounds. Serenity, help me fight the yearn. Checking the one place you prayed I would never discern. The oven broiler. 
got to get out of my head. I check it before I go to bed. I realize it's like finding a needle in a haystack, watery eyes rest on your back. I scrutinize the position of the pack. I lift it up, down, I shake it to hear the sound. I feel if it's heavy enough to carry a bottle around. I listen closely to the swish, swoosh sound of vodka. I think I found, I unzip the bag to find the evidence that proves I'm right, not crazy, not paranoid, not wrong, been looking all night, confused as to why I haven't found it yet. I have more than a hunch, it's around here, I bet, convinced I smelled a trace on your lips last night. You've been melancholy these days, not cheery, not bright. Disconnected thoughts blocks out the light. Conversations on rewind, repeat each night. Lapse in memory, am I losing my mind? The toilet seat was left up again in the middle of the night. All the more reason to keep searching with all my might. Thank you. Lena, thank you so much. I feel like I was in that room. That was so beautiful and descriptive. Thank you and thank you so much for, for your work as a teacher and, and for all the teachers. This has been anything but the job that you were asked to do, but, but y'all are still um, still doing incredibly important work. And, and I know it probably feels thankless with the whole virtual situation that you guys are in right now and that whole battle, but, uh, but it doesn't go unrecognized and, and unappreciated. So thank you for that. And thank you for being with us tonight. And um, both Walina and, and um, some of our others kind of spoke to uh, our next piece here. We want to show you a, a short video that, that speaks to um, some of the work that's being done in our community as it relates to mental health and substance abuse. So we're going to show this uh, quick video and then we're going to uh, pick the poetry back up. So yes, our, our PSV is here to help and, and, and we're here to help them. Another reminder that, that we're here to try to raise a little bit of money tonight. Um, RPSV underscore cares is the account on Venmo. If you want to send them a few bucks, um, all of that money is going to go to, to a really great cause. Um, so please consider uh, giving tonight and, and share that on social media and, and, and we'll generate as much money to, to help people here in our areas as we possibly can. We're going to pick up with our open mic and we want to introduce Sarah Taylor. Sarah. Hi, thank you, Drew. And thank you so much to Monica and the team at RPSB for coordinating this. Obviously, as we just saw a very important event. Um, and thank you to my fellow poets and, and readers for joining us tonight to support. Um, I 
I'm going to read uh, three different poems, um, very short. I specialize in writing Korean Shijo, which is a three line uh, poetic structure. And these three were inspired by um, different experiences and, and um, thoughts that I had during COVID last year. A label, disabled. I'm able, but your definition excludes me. Include me and your perspective might change. Your axis might shift, if only temporarily, because mine is permanent. Essential workers. Essential, it is defined as absolutely necessary, life-giving. Without it, we would perish, water, air, food. My phone rings. Leave it there, I shout. My food order has arrived. It's slow tonight. I hope it picks up. No answer. A voice waves. Left it there, following maps from faceless orders behind doors. Will I have enough food for this week? A tip, it's essential. Change. I am a catalyst for change for inspiration and hope. Each action engenders a thought that becomes a force of will, a cycle that builds a movement. I am the change starting now. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing. Our next presenter tonight is Brian Franco. Brian. Hello everyone. Um, I am living in Brunswick, Maine, and uh, I have two poems. The first poem, I'm gonna pull it up for you, was uh, born out of just the isolation of being stuck in my house by myself. And it's called Because Dervishes Still Whirl on Hotter Than July Nights. I am standing still, stagnating, while the world around me is swirling and twirling, my existence is dizzied by whirling dervishes that may only exist in my imagination by virtue of anxiety or doctor prescribed medication. I feel I've fallen into an eddy, drowning, trying to climb out, fingers haplessly gripping water droplets to no avail. But I am not in any body of water except maybe a sweat soaked pillow on an extremely hot, humid, unair conditioned July night. I stand by my assessment that Stevie Wonder's Hotter Than July is undisputedly one of the top five soul music albums of all time. I am no longer 54 but 14 obsessed with Stevie's music. Having tried tequila for the first time, having had one or two shots too many, my brother Paul walks me up two flights of stairs to my bedroom, pushes his drunken brother onto my bed and walks away cackling like a Shakespearean witch. I'm on my back horizontally, on a vertically oriented bed, trying, my brain tries to instruct me how to reorient my head to my pillow. The ceiling starts spinning relentlessly like a possessed wheel of fortune minus a smiling Vanna White. But this is just a memory of a middle-aged man living in self-imposed isolation in a pandemic who feels like tiny tornadoes follow him around selectively sucking any common sense or creativity left in his being out from his brain through his ear sockets without lifting his substandard mass into the airborne eddies. Maybe I should follow the advice of the mystic poets who advise to celebrate life by dancing instead of watching others dance, become a whirling dervish in my own right, because the dervishes teach us, if we teach ourselves to whirl and twirl, we are not culturally appropriating, but we have learned by watching them how to not let life make us feel falsely dizzy. Thank you. My next poem um, I wrote recently, and it's, a, it's about anger, but it's called Why I Keep a Midwife on Speed Dial. Anger does not always happen as screaming, yelling, stomping of feet, fists clenching, teeth gritting, furrowed brows, tattered nerves. Anger is not always born of aggression. It can be born of hurt and confusion from a womb unaware of the existence of its pregnancy, conceived via an act of 
deception or betrayal from a night of passion that foreshadowed a proposal of forever, but materialized into a morning after with an empty other side of the bed that transformed into an insidious compartmentalized ghost. Anger is not always loud. Anger can exist in silence and stagnation. Anger may not have hard edges that cut and bruise all who come in contact with it. It can be soft. It can be amorphous, made of quicksand, encompassing its host in suspended animation, causing phantom paralysis, till whoever owns it realizes the phantom is a phantom, a figment of an emotion or a feeling or a reaction to a life event or events that happened in the past that is exactly what it is, the past, which can't exist in the present or future due to the fact that the past can only exist in the past. Then the anger starts to shed its skin to reveal a hollow inside that is a breath long held, now exhaled and let go. Gracias, everyone. And thank you for everything, Monica, for setting this up. Thank you for joining us, Brian. We really appreciate that. Now we want to introduce uh, Mark Fishbein. He's going to kind of uh, Fishbein, excuse me. Uh, he's going to kind of lead us out of this of this first hour, um, and then we're going to pick back up uh, with some more uh, presenters, um, including the uh, the second half of our poetry slam. So, Brian, Mark, excuse me. Well, tonight I'm. Uh, if you could scroll, please. Thank you. Uh, tonight I'm going to read um, some poems uh, that I started writing a while last year calling The COVID Odes. It's like a diary in poetry, a chapbook of how it felt at the time, knowing what we knew and what we didn't know, the fears, the paranoia, the sadness, the death, and finally the hope and the vaccine that I received yesterday, actually, my first shot. And I've dated these poems accordingly. And to separate them, I'll kind of play a little bit of my guitar, just a couple of, of bars to set up the poem. And the first poem is April. Uh, scroll, please. April 2020. Blurry photographs of memory the day is like today is like today, dreamless in the alleys of sleep with no blacks or whites, only grays. Spring passes at the speed of light, each sunset forgotten as a wave. When will the par panorama of summer ignite so I ride again on life's fast train? So much sameness in a lukewarm sea the season no longer in its prime, just haze, the sun adrift, no breeze, marooned in a room of no time. Scroll, please. <laughs> In April 2020, in, I'm sorry. This is in May, when the paranoia was still very, very high. I call this poem, Corona Goraphobia. Stay safe, keep apart, don't go out. It's gonna get me, it's no doubt, waiting to get into my nose to sprout. Then what? They say it hurts so you cry, or you see your end in the nurse's eye and you FaceTime, FaceTime your family goodbye, scroll. But I have thrown, but I have to throw the garbage away. Time has come, stinking up the hallway. Yes, I have to throw the garbage away. How will I get to the trash room 12 feet away, that musty closet with a chute filled with virus and vermin sans doute. It's not far down the corridor, 22 steps on the carpet floor back and forth to the trash room door. I take a deep breath and off I go, an Olympian impresario under enemy fire in the war zone. I twist the knob with a gloved right hand, raising the bags with my left hand. All is running according to plan. I open the chute and give a throw, swallowed to the depths below. 
turning red, rushing back on tiptoe to exhale a gale as I reach for the key back in the apartment, fait accompli. Off with the goggles and the mask I wear to ski into the shower, then a bathrobe of silk, only to ponder in this same ilk that I'll soon need a container of milk. COVID homeless, June 2020. Until further notice, all but the homeless must stay away from others and the shelters must be closed. They now own the city streets. It is theirs to walk among themselves, feeding on the plentiful spoils offered by the empty restaurants. Even the police keep their distance. Those who die in the curves are stacked like fish in a fish market to be buried in mass graves not seen since the days of former plagues. Seven billion people stay at home. Only the homeless roam the silent cities, abandoned thoroughfares and main drags. The famous wide avenues which define the immensity of civilization, bowing to the incomprehensible power of disease. Now it is the homeless who choose where to rest their tents and call home. Friday, all day, July 10th, 2020. Day after day spent in this room, trying to remember the earth, memories, in a brain freeze. Humanity exists in two dimensions on the screens. Just the idea of going to a movie seems bizarre. I'm shipwrecked, scratching numbers on a wall. It's hard to concentrate. When does the rage begin? Day after day in this penance for what crimes I can't imagine. Every morning we ask, where does this end? Every hour in a sci-fi timeline, every new prediction, from a cracked silver ball. This may be years, years of our freedom redefined. You know, when the dance halls open, that's where I'll go. Where time is forgiven, well, let there be drums, let there be whistles and mirrored balls ringing when skyscrapers play with changing colored lights, tambourines, bugle horns, electric violins, deafening to awaken the child hiding inside me and dancing in the streets, shirtless in a hot pool of flesh, sniffing perfumes to intoxicate a heartbeat to euphoria. It will be as it was when all that mattered was the city night. Vaccines are announced December 2020. The future is due sooner than later. Cures are found, the missing strain. We'll spend the next season in isolation, waiting under a willow in the rain. January 1st through 14th, 2020. Days and days and hours on hold with the bad, scratchy, soft jazz repeating the same refrain, refrain over and over, trying to register to schedule registration to get a schedule to when the schedule be made available so I can get to register for an appointment and at last get receive a date and time. Every day's call gets disconnected yet again, radio silence. But how we adapt, how we persevere, one day a person, a young, lovely young lady who finished each sentence as a question, gave me a date in two weeks. She was warm and understanding. She knew I had sad eyes, sad and full of tears of relief. Have a good day, she said. Save the elderly first, 
the sick and frail. Once branded senior, now I'm branded elderly. This is quite sudden, a conspiracy. They predicted a lot of dead people, elderly people. They were right. Now I'm proud. Call me elderly. I've survived. Shot in the arm, January 29th, 2021, yesterday. In the anti-universe, I'd like to call them for what they are, immunoglobulin. Today they have injected some in my arm. Now, microscopically and unknown to me, an army of antibodies sharpen their teeth, angry barracudas hungry for a COVID snack. Y-shaped savages in the electron microscope. I feel that I have been marooned for a year. A year lost when you're elderly is a year lost. At last a rescue ship is seen, but with torn sails. The daily numbers flow like a lottery, the graphs of the dying and the infected, corpses filling ice trucks in the parking lots with photographs of the family members warning the world the COVID is real. Eyes of the nurses, tears on their masks, names posted on the hospital walls of loved ones who died alone. After a war, the wounded return home and stay up nights to remember some carnage. But we are still at war, despite I have a cure. The state of alert and death surrounds us all. And let us sanctify with silence. My 98 year old mother among a half million gone, so many unwelcome deaths. Let us remember them, not by hopes, not by prayers, but with a silence that the heart wears like a coat of wordless lament. Let us have a requiem in silence for the dead and the dead to come. Thank you all for letting me share that. Thank you for sharing that beautiful story. And I know we're all in awe of that, that headspace that you're in to transition from, from reading a poem to, to the guitar and then putting that hat back on and, and going through that story that way. That's uh, it's very impressive. And, and thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. We're going to continue the open mics. We want to bring up now Edward Foreman. Edward. Hello. Hope everyone having a good day. Um, thank you. A round of applause for, uh, for the Wonderful poetry, protesting and, po and coalitions. Um, my name is Edward Foreman. I live in North Beach in Washington, D.C. I am actually in the UDC workforce program trying to get his A plus and his AWS stands for Amazon Web Service certifications so I can be a cloud architect. Um, but my most recent passion is poetry. Um, it makes you my imagery is I use the elements so I can paint a beautiful image in people's minds. Actually, I will show you an example. This is called um, The Weatherman. <clears throat> there, uh, there was a man who cried alone for his glittering passing fancy. His roaming heart turned to stone while he ranged enormous and bluer seas. She was a woman adored by the stars for his heartfelt alluring amazement his heart beating like a sports car, too bad he wasn't worthy entertainment. The skies were vivid in the snowy breeze for a soft scorching passion. His hand suddenly freeze, couldn't give her instant satisfaction. The man get lost in his wonderland while being blinded by the flashing signs. Slowly he's the lore of the quicksand. His celestial fate and destiny was on the line. The man's face used to have been brighter than the sun, yet it was beat pale than the full moon. He calls for gray showers as he runs, while his heart, while his weeping heart turns into a swelling balloon. He creates hurricanes while he drinks to forget about his sweet nightingale. His many griefs and wars starts to sink while his hangovers ring louder than any bell. The storm roars about her hunger, her hugs and kisses, yet the thunder strikes with inner criticism. 
The luminous embrace he instantly misses as his inner ominous tornadoes destroys him. He creates the milky mist in her image, the homage to his woman in white. His sunny emotions quickly diminishes. Now he's the fog in her hungry, alluring sight. Okay, I have one more. This is called seasonal, um, seasonal love. Your summer breeze dance around my pale tundra heart. Your blazing essence molding it to radiant and luminous art. The fluorescent melody sang by the flowers and bees sounds so sweet. I'm all your dazzling outfit for your head to your feet. We dance around the bright, colorful orange sun inside the parade of butterflies. We watch the swaying grass and fluffy pollen waltzing up to hug the bay blue sky. Your radiant smile always keeps me instantly at ease. But honey, what's wrong with the trees? I hope it's not fall's orange disease. You by my side while walking through noisy, crisp, and delicate orange leaves. As we watch the stripped trees just weave, weave, and weave. Look at the overgrown pumpkins. It's almost nightmare as Halloween. As you and I and children dress as scary yet whimsical fiends. Your colorful scarf looks fluffier than a foxtail. Honey, do you feel that? Feels like bone chilling, freezing hail. You look so tantalizing in the humid and passing weather. Now it's snowy winter. Hopefully it will get even better. The frigid blankets cover the green lands and the blue sky. The chirping birds, quacking ducks, and honking geese starts to fly. I can see your warming voice in the chilling air. You're, more, or, you're my organic heart, heat while I'm your brown bear. The tiny snowflakes falling down, marking, making large and lumpy marshmallows. The flame slowly goes down to sleep in its earthly burrows. Look, sweetie, beaming buds and colorful flowers on naked branches. Mother Nature awakens from its hibernation while green sully advances. I love you in the blazing summer, crisp fall, chilling winter, and revival spring. Just the seasons, our love, red swings, orange flings, white stings, and green sings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Edward, and, and best of luck with AWS. We're all cheering for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Bringing back now, uh, Michelle Harrell. Michelle. Hello, um, I'm Michelle Harrell. I'm board chair of RPSV. Um, I'm also a special projects coordinator. So what no one else wants to do becomes a special project and I coordinate it. Um, I uh, wrote this uh, poem about COVID during a time when I felt there was little hope and I wanted to offer some. Thank you. Dear COVID, you are a thief. This year you have stolen many moments of joy, freedom, a million reassuring and comforting hugs. Like a tornado, you destroy this house and that, but leave some practically untouched with simply only shutters lost and tossed carelessly away in the wind, leaving that same neighbor to brag that the same storm that broke you was nothing. You ushered in 2020 like an unwelcome destructive enemy into an otherwise happy existence. Just like an internet troll hell bound on destroying an otherwise positive popular post, you shared your acrimony with the world, a cowardly, invisible, unwelcome force, but you all but obliterated family traditions weddings, baptisms, holidays, milestone birthdays, and much too many memorial services. Once in a lifetime moments dissolved into a virtual gathering of faces displayed similarly to Hollywood squares, or worse, postponed indefinitely, leaving us with nothing to look forward to. Happy moments lost to the ether. Instead of sharing an embrace, we shout and point, saying over and over again, Hey, hey, you're on mute, you're on mute. You did teach us gratitude though for events we never thought would leave us. State fairs, fireworks, church services, shared meals, classrooms, museums, a never ending list, all destroyed by the storm that is you, COVID. Yet you awakened us to what matters, but we cannot blame you alone for the chaos, hatred, confusion, 
you had help. Those who believe you are a mirage, something that would vanish as one comes closer, laughing at barriers of safety as hundreds and thousands of our loved ones were placed six feet under because some would not stay six feet away. We look to leaders for answers and only just now are gathering them in the form of a punctured shoulder, inoculated with a serum, a serum from a scientist who are traditionally faithless maybe, but always true. COVID, the breath you have stolen. Hearts you have broken, you've ridden rampant through the paths of our lives like a trespasser without an invitation without or a hitchhiker on a wayward train without a token. You are the Grinch, the Scrooge, Voldemort, the devil. Yet hope remains, carrying gratitude gracefully over her shoulders. You've taken so many of our family members and friends, but you have underestimated hope's strength, which will remain long after you are a distant, ugly memory and you'll be nothing more than a layer of dust polished away from a beloved antique. Hope stands firm, planting roots like the aged willow, afraid of the wind, and like a gem shining brighter and more beautiful with each challenge, hope continues scratching glass like a diamond proving she's real, writing, I will prevail to be seen each time we search as the lonely, the quarantined, through her marked window for the promise of the sun. Hope writes for all of us to see, nothing is impossible when you are stronger than your enemy. Sign simply me. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Hope stands firm, love that. Welcome our next presenter. This is Unmesh Mahabkar. Unmesh. Thank you. Hi, I'm Unmesh Mohitkar from Pune, India. So here we go. Resistant. People are resistant, ignorant to change. People are resistant, ignorant to change. Slowly, gradually change. Ease them into oblivion. This was the first short one. The second short one is called Badlands. The badlands are difficult to survive for everyone. The badlands are difficult to survive for everyone and good people suffer everywhere. That was the second one. Third, third one is called, it's a slightly longer one, Mind Games. Battles of the mind rarely are kind. They wind and wind and rewind, so fragile, single drop of tear can demolish it, so strong, rivers of blood cannot shake it, try to control, it drifts into the unknown, try to control, confines you to the jail of routine, tradition and boredom. Unfortunately, mind never minds, it, minds its own business. It has a life of its own, which nobody can rule or own. It never minds the gap. Neither the stars can guide it, nor the maps. That was the second one. Third one is called rage, anger, temper. Rage is grossly misunderstood. It is greater than physical violence. Different flavors, rampaging rage, simmering rage, hidden rage, jealous rage. Silent rage, lover's rage, righteous rage, falsified rage, volatile seeking home, or sages who leave home. No middle way, burn or get scalded, die or suffer the living death. There is no winner in the cage of the rage. It's a maze, defeat in every corner and every phase. In the haze of the rage, countries destroyed, families raised, unforgiving gaze, unrelenting silence, relentless noise, shouting game, fighting game, no shame, broken heart, burning lungs, broken limbs, melancholy winds, singing songs, ringing cops, breaking windows, slamming doors, 
crying children, orphan parents, homeless adults, shelter home kids, rage, rage, go away, little Johnny wants to play, please don't come again, rage, rage, go away, little Johnny wants to play, please don't come again. Thank you, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and for joining us. We appreciated that very much. That was incredible energy. Our next presenter tonight is Island Oats. My poem is called Island. If I drink enough water, all my problems will fade away. If I don't drink water, my issues will get worse. Is that just a myth? Or am I right? My name is Island, but that doesn't mean I always enjoy being alone. Let's just say if I take a trip to the beach, you will most likely see me surrounded by friends, by my friends or family. And that includes bringing volleyballs with me. I'll bring my blanket and lay in the sand pretending that I am in the comfort of my home. I saw a drunk man that just left a parade chasing everyone by the coconut trees. His partner was afraid of salt water getting in his eyes, so he left early. I'm not really at the beach to compete with anyone, so I won't need a pacifier or tissues if I lose in volleyball, or if I can't swim as if I were a fish. No, I am not afraid of the water, but I still can't swim to save my life. Am I really scared of water or just not relaxed enough? Accepting that I could never be a lifeguard isn't the hardest. It's easy and simple as ABC123 to accept the reality. It's okay if we can't swim. We can still enjoy the water. The end. Island, thank you so much. Our next yeah. presenter tonight is Julia Prentice. Julia. My name is Julia Prentice. I come from Charlotte, North Carolina. My poem's title is Entering April. So during March, I became aware of COVID-19 and was just getting over a mental health crisis and feeling better. So this is what happened next. April, you began with a fool's greeting, a rabbit, rabbit kind of day, but the first of many showering ones. But spring peeks through mossy fingers, bulbs push through damp soil, pansy faces gaze at us, and tulips are poised to kiss the sky. Two days more, Enter birthdays, dad, son-in-law, son, and son's girlfriend, then anniversaries, celebrated, mourned, or glossed over, painting, gladdening, logs covered in lichen, days tumble past, thunderstorms, wind, rain, and stuttering sunlight. High holy days, palms and crosses, Saturdays and Sundays, feasts and fasts, Passover, and passed over, noted or ignored, sacred and mundane, tax day to mark the middle, April Ides, more rain, cold heat, virtual this and distance that, stay inside. Still, days full with riotous, glorious blooms, it were spinning forward, onward faster, greener, warmer, stretched out earthy days, garden mornings, hot and lazy, Cool mist hazy. Oh, when will you exit, April? Will I ever exit you? A doozy of a month seems as long as a year. Why? There's a pandemic, don't you know? And it's not done yet. Julia, thank you so much. I think we can all relate to that birthday bit, right? It's like that, that moment that's normally so special. And, you know, we, we've reinvented all the ways that we celebrate our lives and, and our friends' lives this year. Thank you so much for sharing. Our next presenter tonight is going to be Rebecca Bird. Rebecca. 
Hello there. Um, so I'm from Fairfax and I work with RPSV. And uh, the poem I'm gonna read is um, dedicated to those who feel isolated. So dear COVID, um, here's a poem dedicated to those who are feeling isolated. It's about time. Born out of the cold, a crescendo of light. Just as you spiraled into the depths of sadness, you truly suffered. You elevate to the heights of elation. You are far beyond the contrast of everyday life. A helpless infant's outstretched arms, yearning and so eager, craving the love which is sought in the outside world. Raw, vulnerable, weak and soft, yet profoundness, majesty and strength pulsating through its veins. Ready to start as a deliberate creator, voice shaking, yet ready to speak the truth. The love increasing in intensity. We didn't think it was possible. We thought it was limited, but it is infinitely increasing in intensity. The love I sought, the love you chase. You gaze into your own pupils to find the light of the cosmos within. There is great love for you here, and it is always unconditional. You do not deserve to suffer. You never deserve to suffer. Release into the safety of the unconditional embrace, the piercing beauty of the silence, knowing that you are never alone. From the depths of your soul, you are ready, ready to receive, ready to reclaim your love. Essence beyond what energy can be translated into words, you are always loved. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Powerful message there. Um, thank you to all of our open mic presenters. There'll be a couple more uh, as we move through the night, but now we are going to get ready for round two of our poetry slam portion of the evening. Um, so remember, we're gonna, um, we're gonna tally in a poll after our three um, presenters uh, wrap up and we're gonna tally that up and, uh, and, and divvy out the bragging rights tonight. So we'll uh, begin. Uh, part two, just as we did the last time with Dominique. Dominique. Okay, so this uh, piece is called uh, Childhood Poem, which I mean, it's not really much of a title, but all right. We're going on a trip and my mind's a rocket ship. Zooming through all time, I'm a little Einstein. I spent the summers with noggin and holidays at the playhouse. Disney holds memories that I can only cherish with teary eyed reminiscence. Miss Spider's sunny patch gave comfort in knowing that the bugs speak too. Gave way for my heart to make room for friends. For adventures, Ming Ming Duckling and her friends make me question when the pets left the classroom. That they ever have meetings in the hallways? When the phone rings, is someone in danger? Need rescue? Booby taught me childhood doesn't require toys or people, just two hands and an imagination. Maybe a little hat or googly eyes would help. <laughs> this was fun. This was life before smart objects taught children which way to grow, when outside was safe for the most part before the street lights came on, when rock and stick were best friends, but would always fight because stick constantly kicked rock unless by the slim chance he missed. I met personification in my front yard. As baby sun rose on Saturdays, I looked forward to life, to experiencing freedom on my block, but as for the educators of the night, Christopher Robin and his friends, I learned lessons without ever being taught. Remember feeling closest to Eeyore as summer 2007 drawn to a close and I had been promoted to two houses, to two timelines labeled moms and dads. Remember past of Winnie like traits as honey and stuff became my grips to reality. Yet like owl, I chose to forget those habits when comments of obesity and lose weight became daily threats in conversation. The hate of myself only grew when other tail covers would shrink. Remember tiptoeing around thoughts confronted in conversation, felt piglet shake alongside me, fear peeking as I love you was expected reply. The sadness tugged at my vocal cords as you two was all I could muster. Rabbit helped me lessen the blows of disgusting and description of pig as I cleaned and scrubbed the saline solutions of bodily input. Tidy was always better. Kinga would sneak up when growing up fast wasn't optional. 
and taking care of myself was the only option. Fighting throat lumps to communicate was necessary. Eeyore and I thought together on days when life felt like too much, when the touch of humanity felt so far, even in rooms of family. Eeyore whispered to me in car rides filled with the stink and heat of life so far removed, invited suicide to my bedroom and homicide to my brain waves. But then comes Tigger, always reminding me that there is an opposite to every emotion. A potion to turn frowns upside down. He'd bounce and pounce and bring smiles to my cheeks like only a Tigger could. He'd monologue on, I am fast awake, ready to PLA. Why? Because time is of the essence. We steer our blessings and God is waiting for us to let go. Chill out. Put all that freaking cake in your mouth. Tiggers may be bouncing off the walls, but honey sure is sweet and bouncing is what Tiggers do best. He made me wish he wasn't the he wasn't the only of his kind and made the journey to being happy so much more desirable. Thank you, childhood. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. That cadence and rhythm brings that parents to life. That's amazing. Thank you. Our next uh, presenter is Matthew. Matthew, welcome back. What the heck, Domo? <laughs> That was amazing, first off. So another round of applause for her because she uh, killed it. Oh, my gosh. Pretty sure that, oh, my goodness. Oof. Okay. I had to, like, redo it now because I had to find my, my little childhood, like, one, one that has to do with my childhood, I guess, a little bit, or growing up, parents, stuff like that, just, just for this. Make it more lighthearted because I love the lightheartedness of it all. I'm going to go into it. Okay. Thanks, mom, for the ADHD and the anxiety. Now, I, I don't want to blame you because it, it really isn't your fault. My abuela is just as much to blame for. She can also talk and talk and talk till one's heads pop off. But I've seen you, even though you try to hide it, your worry that goes beyond that mother's worry and your stress and your self-doubt and your overthinking that comes with your anxiety. Both ADHD and anxiety are caused by the same neurotransmitters at the front part of the brain. That's what causes one to go haywire, just a bit miswired, a malfunction, a dopamine boost that gives a lot of confidence to lose. No AA meeting for this A and A, but hey, it's not because you're a bad mom or that you raised me wrong, or that you put too much sugar in my cornflakes at one time, or that you let me have soda with tamales that one Christmas Eve. No, it's just that our chemicals, the way that we make it in our brain, it just doesn't work the same as you can see in me and in you and abuela. We all have it. We all have it. We all have it. <laughs> oh, it's made my life just a, just a little bit hard and classrooms and with people and, and with girls, <laughs> but it's kept me going too. Literally. I cannot stop my brain. The switch is on on both sides, so I can't sleep. But hey, that's never stopped me from dreaming or better yet doing or creating or passing or writing or smiling or loving because Abuela, even as she tells me the story for the hundredth time, always has that rainbow sparkle in her eyes that can only be created when it rains with the sun out. You have it too, but doubled, double rainbow that you pluck out of your eyes occasionally like crayons to color my mismatched brain like a kindergartner who can't keep within the lines making me something like a triple rainbow that sparkle in my eye, curating the excess dopamine you help give me, which is only there because of you and abuela and probably some familia before, giving me the energy to overcome the fear that leaks from my neurotransmitters, <clears throat> causing me to bounce off the walls and overthink like a robot that's hot with control commands from pushing too many buttons while the screen was frozen. But if I didn't start at this down, I wouldn't have all this room to go up, up, up to the top and reach the sky and show off my own sparkle lit rainbow that kisses my eyes, the same one that you have and la abuela. So thanks, mom, for the ADHD and anxiety. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Love it. 
keep coloring outside the lines because whatever yeah. you're doing outside there is fun. And I honestly easy. cannot color inside the lines. <laughs> it is painful to do it. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, uh, now we bring back Kieran. Kieran, welcome back. Hello, thanks for having me. So this one's called Food, and it's just about our um, relationship with other animals, uh, non-human animals, and how they're here with us and not for us. So I hope you like it. My teeth are an explosion. I ask them to be kind to my smoked salmon and scrambled eggs. Remember when I found out that fish, the food, was fish the animal, crying up to my dad, look. I want to tell you that Morrison's was already flooded. Noah on his boat full of animals did not crash through the windows. They were just here. They were just, they were just here. Waves squashing the fishes back to life. Faces a continent. They heard me scream. They leapt up yelling, gotcha. We're not food. I wanna say my chainsaw fingernails didn't muddy the ocean with so much greed. They trusted me, that sweet little boy. Cheers. Thanks. Aaron, man, thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right, guys, um, this is our opportunity for our second uh, poll of the evening. We're going to tally these up and, uh, and, and divvy out the, uh, the bragging rights for this evening. So go ahead and click through those. I'll let you guys work on that, but I want to keep the, uh, keep the energy moving here. So we've got a couple more open mic presenters to get to this evening. So we'll get them going and then we'll come back um, and announce the results of the polls. And of course, guys, we, we appreciate you guys, you know, doing this. Obviously, this is so much more of a, a, a unique and different experience when we're not in a room together, we're not flowing off of each other's energy and, and we can't, you know, give back to the presenters that, that you know, the appreciation that we have for, for their art. Um, so again, you know, throw the shout outs in the chat. Remember that we are here to raise money for a really good cause tonight. Uh, the Venmo is listed in the chat. Um, you can find that on there. And, and you saw the videos from earlier about you know, just how significant of an impact anything you can give is, is going to mean for the people in our community. And, and, and this is work being done right here in the DMV, right here in Northern Virginia, people that we live next to, our friends and our family members. Um, we all have connections to, to, to people who, who need help within our families or, or we need help ourselves. And, and this is a great opportunity uh, to make sure that we're supporting the people who support all of us. Um, so please feel free to give and there's information there. Look up uh, the websites too and just get more information about these causes um, if you wanna follow along and there's everybody sharing their blogs and their uh, Instagram. So, um, you know, keep, keep that energy going. So our next uh, open mic presenter will be Lisa Rhodes Riachi. Lisa. I'll give a little background about myself. Um, I have two chat books and um, two full length poetry books and um, with Finishing Line Press and Ciderwit.net, so I'm really happy. And um, I'm a teacher, I uh, teach poetry and writing at Worcester Community College and um, I have a special needs daughter, so I have a lot on my plate, but um, I juggle a lot, but I'm a single mom too. So here's my first poem. It's called Reimagining Hope. I keep looking to see if there is something else here besides the strange choppy waters seemingly looking like the spawning of seeds and it's beautiful. Imagining how life gets its form. Then I get a little further down and I begin to think about reading the water and the inauguration and parts of the water look sickly as if they are diseased like black plague or is it COVID-19? Then I imagine an army of blackbirds settling in at each embassy and the inauguration and the fear it might induce to those coming with vengeance and the thought of getting pecked to death. And I'm thinking amidst all this debris, there's got to be something beautiful. If there's got, if there's to be an epiphany, 
There's got to be something beautiful, a piece of crabgrass, a flower blossoming inside the ice. And I look and suddenly I see there are three ducks, a mostly white seagull and two Canadian geese. I admire them with their pretty brown feathers and a little white sticking out and I want to hear them singing. And now the seagull is in the middle with five others and waiting for something beautiful within the messed up rambles. And they are flaxen and dried out without a roof over them in the winter. And a wavy, desolate water looks meditating and very choppy with multitudes of little arches, like ripples in sleep circadian waves, the water is sleeping or purring. And even as I scramble to look and see the faded brown flower, yes, it looks like it was dried out for the winter. And yes, I do see the hawk and I see a seagull with its wings spread out, pressed against the wind gliding taking cool air inside its lungs. And then I catch a piece of white fur riding away on the wind. And I see a little adorable cherub statue of a little cherub girl. And there is steam coming out from someplace like she is speaking and it's magical. And she breathes and breathes and breathes. So my next poem is called, trying to pull it The Light of the World. Here on this COVID-19 bridge of starshine and clay, I see the immense light of the world, a healing helix, and I'm basking in its warmth coming through my bedroom window, half lit on the right cheek of my daughter, sleeping in the air of joy, breaths silent and filling, magical and knowledgeable, saintly and pure, a miracle of light, soft like clouds, luminescent froth wafting immensely in intensity, a world beyond imagining. Real as God walking across the water in broad daylight. Imagine the air filled with strange light bugs gliding in all directions to viscerate an otherworldly blackness. Colorful bursts of light energy boundless throughout ad infinitum. Where does the world come to an end? or does it never end? Changing and evolving over time to something greater than man could ever fathom. No colliding meteorites, no black holes, incessantly gobbling up stars, but something else wonderful, a light basin of truth showing the creatures of the galaxy a world of compassion, a vision for humanity to collectively heal their broken hearts and make peace with the gods who made them. Thank you. Lisa, thank you so much. And um, I apologize to everybody if you were looking at me throughout that. Lisa didn't have her video on, um, but we're glad that she had her microphone on so she could share, uh, share well, that. I didn't know there was no video, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Sorry. It was what you were saying. Um, that mattered the most. Thank you so much. Uh, we got a couple more uh, presenters tonight. Um, our next up is Anthony Flagg. Anthony. Hello, everyone. Man, it's been beautiful. I wish we were um, in a room together, but but we are virtually. I'm I'm a Baltimore guy calling in from New Mexico, and I've always loved kind of in the moment poetry, and so you're gonna have to. Um, just, just stand, stand with me on this, but I tried to capture as the event um, progressed everything that we were saying. So here it goes. Vaccinating despair 
immunizing against virus and viral fear and isolation, inoculating resilience, injecting hope, inspiring immune response and infectious optimism. We are each other's warm line, pick up when we fall, bus boys and RPSV, RSVP for poetic stanzas looking for healing infectious. Like Langston Hughes, we too sing the blues. Anissa sussed us. Matthew Dominique Curran slammed us with, this is America, nah, question. This is America? Libby from college, Lydia from Nashville, Leslie from the board, Lan from the shy. We shall overcome. We demand our wellness back. As few infected, all affected, warmth manifests, magnificent. Willina puts us back into driver's seat, reach up, reach out, reach in, orbit to planet Sarah, three line proclamations drizzling sweet honey upon our plate. Brian keeps us spinning, dizzy with hurt and hope, anger and awe, loss and love. Mark deftly diagnoses coronagoraphobia, symptoms and treatment played to chords calming. Edward, Lord of the quicksand, sinks softly syllable, snowflake soothing soul. Michelle drops names, drips irony, dives grateful. Unmesh, dang, you sang to our hearts, straight from your soul. Island, you ain't alone. Your continent confidence celebrates community. Julia pushed us through damp soil, feasts and fasts. You never deserve to suffer, Rebecca reminds, holding our collective hands. Dominique, Ming, Ming, Ring, Ring, Bling, Bling, are your personified fairy tale rhymes. Matthew, you are our dopamine boost. Never stop dreaming, doing rainbow radiance. Quran, chainsaw fingernails clawing at life's balance and our small place in it. Look through the grime, grit, gray, and see something beautiful, Lisa implores. Brothers and sisters, our dear COVID concoctions, rhyme resilient, are the seed for us to burst forth, masked up six feet apart, intimately connected, and heal, heal, heal. Thank you so much. Dude, that was so impressive. So much for that. Um, whew, quick thinking, man, that was cool. All right, we've got, uh, I believe, one more presenter tonight. Uh, we're gonna welcome Zoe Thomas. Zoe. A little background about me. I've been, I live in Washington State, but I'm actually here doing treatment for severe anxiety and depression, specifically OCD. So I've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth from hospital to hospital, and I have wrote a few poems. I can read only two of them, but whatever we have time for, honestly. Um. I'll start with, two, I'll just do two of them. Okay. All right, this is my ode to OCD. I am broken, I am broken. Soft-spoken and broken, choking on my words and worlds not real, but feel awoken. My hoping and my life. I'm your working weary wife who cries at night and tries to fly. For fight she flights, but you clipped my wings. Now the silver-winged swan who swam across the lake and her, world, and her breath is poison, like she swerved on a road, and you stopped the car before it crashed, and you stretched my debt so death would last across the years of tears and hate, and the wings get stuck in silver cage, and she bathes herself in whispered hate, because the cabinets had no soap to cleanse and start all over again. Abuse is the word that's loose on my tongue, the silver noose I never hung, the suicidal cycle of euphoric fun, until I am just done. And I want to start all over again, clean slate, so my world won't be coated over in hate. You brought a rose into my world that was in my garden I never heard. And you meddled with the petals, I blossomed late, and I trapped her in the guilty hate. And you soiled the soil from which she grew. I dug through roots to find the clues. So many lilacs, daisies, birds, and bees, but all I picked was OCD. And you lied to me, tore them away, and you brainwashed thoughts, thoughts that brought me pain and gloomy skies and murky days. I never knew could be a face because it felt so real and my rose felt real and it felt like my mind didn't mind if I didn't feel. In my case of godly grace, I didn't see fake flowers because if I had, why would have I spent all those hours? I'm broken, hurt, and really confused. But above all else, I feel so used and I still don't know what I have done to see gray clouds but not feel sun when all she wanted was to feel safe and loved, and now the world is tainted, she can't rise above. Even if you won't give in, even if you won't leave, 
I will be forgiven because I want to breathe. So that was that one. <laughs> um, all right, next one is about OCD as well, about how we're all obsessing right now, because what else do we have to do? Especially with OCD, we've been obsessing since before it was cool. So, all right, it's called Rehabilitating Ahab. Everyone knows of Moby Dick. Everyone knows the man. He's achieving what he can. Trying is man's word of saying, trying, man's word of explaining how one day we'll catch our dreams swimming fast and no longer hold them wrangling. Sometimes we drive on our own. We tend to drive really fast. We drive off our ghosts far away from home, away from our past. Moby Dick is no different. That man is demons they hide. The only difference between his and our demons is his breach in the light. Everyone has our own version of a big and mysterious whale, something you can't hide in your pocket. They'll find it, but lock in your head and your soul when you dive, and you do not see him often, the whales whose tail was grim. The most inconvenient ingenious is you see him when you don't want to let him in. Ahab dealt with similar shit, but the difference is he had a ghost of the deep, though he would hide in his passion steadfast, and that mother whale wouldn't let him sleep. OCD is seen in the eyes and in cries of despair when the answers are up in the air and we're so unaware of our anguish, so languished while trying to find this and questioning why this, then OCD says that we're lazy and worthless. This whale is so graceful, a gargantuan wonder. Reality will shrivel for all hungry hunters. I'll be wiser and kinder and find all my answers for finally I found the cancer. The tighter I grabbed on the rope of this beast, what I didn't see made me drop to my knees. And I, I went on a goose chase, but finding other birds. And I wanted to pot the gravel and search in the dirt for my past that I thought I'd put to its peace would always be my hole. I'll always search for in the deep. I can grasp how much Captain Ahab hurt for the worst pain you can face is living in an unwanted world. While you sleep, you are crying. While you cry, you are sleeping. My dear, I am here. Believe me, I've been there. Sweet thing, the only truth that you'll ever know, that you didn't know, that you'll never know, that the whale's a fish, you won't find any knowledge. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. That was powerful. We appreciate you being here. We're glad you're here. Yeah, you thank you. Glad you're, glad you're here to share. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of these presenters. This has been inspiring. Um, honest and raw and, and uplifting all at the same time. Um, thank you. Uh, we do have the results from our poetry slam tonight. It was incredibly close. It was so close, in fact, that there's actually a tie at the top between Matthew and Dominique. So thank you to all three of you um, for, for being here, um, for sharing your words and your thoughts. It, it, was, it was powerful and, and we appreciate you guys so much. Tiebreaker? <laughs> Tiebreaker? Um, I think this is. <laughs> if if we're not going to run out of uh, if we're not going to run out of time on the Zoom, um, I'm uh, no time for a tiebreaker. We are running out. Um, and to make sure that we don't get cut off, of course, we want to say thank you uh, to Bus Boys and Poets, and we want to have Charity come back on and share just a couple more thoughts. Charity. Yeah. No. Nah, thank. I mean, y'all thanking us. Well, I'm just super, super, super honored to be a part of this. To hear all of the wonderful, wonderful poets, all of the presenters. Um, this was just amazing, outstanding. Um, all of y'all are super, super talented and make me want to kind of throw my pen away or maybe take some workshops with y'all or something like that. But nah, this has been great. Um, and I hope that everyone that was listening to the poets um, were able to relate to some of the stuff that were be was being said, able to um, really hear them out. And and hopefully provided some healing. I know that I have been really struggling with COVID personally. Um, and writing has been something that has really gotten me far. So it's good to see that other people are using that as a tool as well. So just thank you on behalf of Bus Boys. And yeah, short and sweet. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Charity. Appreciate the, the work that you guys do in our community. It's incredible. Uh, we'll bring Michelle on to close our program tonight. Michelle? Um, well, we all at Recovery Program Solutions of Virginia thank Charity, Drew, Zavin, Olivia, all the incredible performers, and each of you for being part of this amazing and uplifting event. Please again thank and acknowledge Monica Taylor for all of her hard work, 
creating this wonderful positive event during such a challenging time in all of our lives. We encourage all of our guests to seek out our programs. If you or someone else needs assistance, if you know anyone struggling who needs a safe, warm place with caring people ready to help them get back onto their feet, please refer them to us. You can find our programs and contact information on our website, www.rpsva.org. For all of those of you who donated to support the homeless adults we serve, we humbly thank you. For those who did not, do not worry. We know times, they're difficult now. Thank you for supporting us with your time and attention. While on our website, please sign up for our newsletter and also um, for Busboys and Poets newsletter uh, to keep up with other events we're hosting this year in honor of our 10th anniversary. There's a sign up pop-up box at, as soon as you go to our website, which is again, again, www.rpsva.org. And I wish you all a safe and phenomenal 2021. If you would please stay for a few more minutes, we wanna play a song for you that we find exceptionally uplifting. One of the things we share with those we serve often is the quote, you are not alone. We are all in this together. Together we will overcome COVID-19. Please be safe and enjoy this song and take good care of yourself. Thank you.